Hello, amazing parents. In this video, I'm going to show you the simplest and easy way to access the potential of your child's brain right at home through something called body mapping. Body mapping helps the brain piece together a more complex image of ourselves. Our brains need to know where do we start? Where do we end to create functional movements? Now, my daughter's brain had no idea that her legs were connected to her hips, were connected to her spine, was connected to her head because she really didn't have self-initiated movements before about six months old. So if I laid her down on the floor and went to the bathroom and came back, she would literally be in exactly the same position as I left her in. Because of her genetic disorder, her brain wasn't able to self-initiate movement, all of those random baby movements that you see neurotypical babies do. So because her brain didn't have the experience of self-exploration of how her body moved under the force of gravity, her brain had these huge holes of experience of herself. To fully move through this world and balance our big heavy heads over top of our spines, over top of our pelvis, over top of our legs, our brains need an enormous amount of experience of where our body parts are in space and how they're all connected and how they can be coordinated together. Now, the more quality experiences our brains have, the more coordination and the better balance we're gonna have. The simple act of lifting an arm off the floor is actually a really super complex movement. It involves a lot of teeny tiny movements and connections that the brain has to make between all of these different body parts. If the brain only has a few of these teeny tiny movements mapped, then there's gonna be gaps in the larger movements, such as learning to roll over, holding your head up, coming up into sitting, reaching for things, and transitioning into crawling, standing, etc. The more experience the brain has of those teeny tiny movements, the more connections there are between body parts, creates a larger foundation for the brain to draw on that creates better balance, better coordination, learning new skills, and creates more options. So body mapping is one of the simplest and easy ways that you can start to fill in any of the missing gaps that your child's brain just simply might have. Now, chances are you're probably already naturally doing this with your child. Many children's songs involve body mapping, head and shoulders, knees and toes. This little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home. Those are all wonderful ways to body map. But I'm gonna show you some tips on how to make body mapping more intentional. So you can create these tiny slices of learning moments throughout your everyday life that doesn't take any extra time in your day. But first, we're gonna explore how body mapping actually creates change in our own brains so you as parents can experience just how powerful body mapping can be, which helps to get bigger changes when you transfer it to your child. So all you'll need is a simple stool or kitchen chair, so go ahead and grab that. Now, one movement that frustrates me, and I know a lot of other people too, is the inability to touch my toes when I'm standing. So we're going to explore how body mapping can actually increase our flexibility to maybe help us get closer to reaching our toes. So first let's do a reference movement of just standing up and simply go down and reach your toes and stop where it's comfortable. So we don't want to feel a stretch at all. Just stop where it's comfortable. I'm comfortable about here and then have a seat and we're going to explore some body mapping that's going to fill in some missing gaps in our own brains to create change in real time. So we'll start using our own hands and gently place them on the top of your leg and just slide your fingertips and hands down along the top of your leg. And if you're able to, you can even lift up your leg down past your knee and just feel as far down as is comfortable. Again, we're not stretching here. We are body mapping. So we're just feeling where does our top of our leg begin and end? How wide are different parts of your leg? How narrow is your ankle? Where are all those little valleys and dips and mountains in your leg? So running your hands down the top of your leg as far as you can. If you can't lift up your leg, that's fine. You can actually just bend it down if that's a little bit easier for you to map the top of your leg. And then you can go ahead and map the back of your leg. Now we don't often do this, but our legs are three dimensional and this is gonna fill in some missing pieces for our brain because we don't actually often map this part. 
I'm going to change it up and actually lift my leg so I can run my hands down here. Maybe I can get to my feet barely though, not quite. Now I'm going to start to add in some variation. So maybe my hands on the outside of my leg. I'm going to see, oh, how far back can I go to map my bum area down here, down my knee, down to the foot, around the toes. Can I lift up my feet and get to the toes? Not really. Remember to keep the movement comfortable and within your comfort zone. The trick to brain plasticity isn't to go past your maximum effort. It's actually about the curiosity of where can you go comfortable? How can I give my brain new pieces of information that I haven't given it before? I'm going to get really curious about this one leg going around the calf if I can, around the ankle, down the foot, be underneath the arch, underneath the heel, underneath the toes. And actually I'm already noticing myself that I'm, I can go and reach things a little bit further with a little bit more comfort. And then you can go ahead and map the other leg. You can start with the top, slide your hands down, keep it comfortable as you can. Maybe you can lift your leg up in this way here. And then I'm going to start to do what feels comfortable for me and get a little bit creative and curious of where, where do my hands, how far can my hands feel around my toes, around my foot, um, around my calf? How wide is my calf? How narrow is my knee? What sorts of shapes and things can I feel over here? Moving things, flooring, body mapping, getting curious. Now we can use our hands to body map, but we can also use different parts of our bodies to body map. And that's where it gets really fun, especially with the kids. So this time, instead of sliding your hands down your legs, maybe give your elbows a try. So I'm going to slide my elbows down the top part of my leg. I can't get too far down that way, but I think I can lift my leg up and slide my leg along my elbow and get really curious about what you can do. Where's, where is it comfortable? Find the most comfortable spot so you can connect your elbow to your leg without going too far. See, I'm not, I'm not stretching. I'm not holding anything. I'm just running my elbow along my leg. And then you can do the other elbow too. Get really curious. Hmm. Now you don't just have to use your elbows. You could also use your feet. Feet are a super fun way to body map, especially with the kids. So you can use your feet to body map your other leg. So I'm running my one foot up and down my leg here, I'm trying to get on the other side. I could follow it pretty good on the inside. What about the outside? Just a little bit there. Remember to keep the movements comfortable. If you need to, you can support your knee with your hands if that makes it a little bit easier for you. And you can even break down each part of the feet so you can trace with your toes. You could trace with your heels. It gives a very different sensation when you do different body parts. This is the rich quality experience that your brain craves. It's taking all of this quality incoming information and it's going to use it to reorganize your old habitual movement patterns. So let's see how amazing our brains are. Come into a standing position again and then simply bend over and see how far can you reach now? Oh, I can actually reach the floor now. Now, if you noticed a difference, congratulations, you just experienced brain plasticity in real time. Your brain was able to collect that quality information and turn it into something useful, like better flexibility without actually stretching. It was a fun, simple, gentle way to help the brain gather up the information that it was just missing to create the better balance, better flexibility, better coordination. So now that you felt how simple body mapping can improve your own movements, now we can transfer that to our children. We can give their brains the quality information and start filling in any missing gaps that they might have. I like to body map whenever it makes sense naturally in my daily routine. So whenever you're hands-on with your child, like getting them dressed, changing a diaper, picking them up, giving them a snuggle. These are all really great ways to slow yourself down, take a few extra seconds and body map with your child. So you can simply use your own hands to body map. So I can run my hands down the length of her arms and just connect to her. I'm going to slow myself down because slowing down helps the brain pay attention to what's happening. So by slowing down how I touch her, just running my hands down the length of her arms, 
playing with her fingers a little bit, maybe doing the other arm. I'm basically shining a spotlight for her brain to say, hey, pay attention to this body part here. This is how long it is. This is how wide it is. This is what it is in three dimensions. So you can body map with your own hands or you can body map with their own bodies. So you can gently have them run their hands down their bodies along one leg and the foot. And once again, only do this if they're comfortable. So keep the movements in their comfortable position. If they can't get their hand to their foot, do not go there. You start where they're the most comfortable. So you just start them exploring their hip area or their tummy area. Maybe you can gently lift a leg so they can feel their upper thigh, keeping it nice and slow. This is especially important for kids who have spasticity. Always make sure your child is comfortable. So you could use their hands, you could use their feet, the body map, their other foot, their leg use their toes, their heels. You can also use interesting objects or toys that they're interested in to body map. So we've all played this with our kids. Zooming the car down an arm, down a leg, over one toe, over the other toe, the next toe. And the trick with this kind of body mapping is keeping them engaged with you, getting them curious, having fun, and slowing yourself way down. So I'm not gonna run the car up and down super fast along her whole body. I'm gonna slow it down and get curious about her knee, get curious about her ankle, get curious about the bottom of her foot, the inside of her foot, the outside of her foot. And again, wherever the car is touching her, it's shining a spotlight to her brain to say, hey, this is where your foot begins ends, it has three dimensions, this is where it is in space, and this is all quality information that the brain is going to use in those larger movements. So you could use a little toy car, a little ball, a little soft feather, their favorite stuffy, a soft blanket, and even their clothes as you're getting them dressed. One of my favorite things to do is when you're getting your child dressed, if you're slipping their arm through the armhole, slow it down. Narrate what's happening. Where did your hand go? Is your hand in there? Oh, I see a thumb coming out. Oh, I see a finger coming out of the sleeve. I see another finger. I see a wrist. I see an elbow. I see a shoulder. So using whatever daily activities that you're already doing with your child by slowing it down, getting curious about where does their body begin and end and using your own hands, using their body, using fun toys and games. You can be body mapping and creating these tiny little rich experiences of learning moments throughout your day that your child's brain is going to gobble up this quality information and start to fill in any of those missing pieces to create the stronger foundation for them to be able to do the larger milestones. So hopefully this is helpful and gives you some ideas of how you can do simple body mapping right at home with your child. So go out, do some body mapping today with your child. Let me know how it goes and if there's any changes that you notice and we'll see you in the next video.